Welcome back to our course, Fundamentals of Operating Systems, based on the textbook Operating System Concepts, 10th edition, by Silvershots, Gagne, and Galvin. We just finished Lesson 2 on the topic of Mass Storage Systems and Storage Management System. And now we're going to conclude this unit with Lesson 3. So let's pick up where we left off. One of the responsibilities of the operating system is to use the hardware efficiently. For hard disk drives, meeting this responsibility involves minimizing access time and maximizing data transfer bandwidth. For hard disk drives and other mechanical storage devices that use platter, access time has two major components as we've already discussed. The seek time is the time for the device to move the head out over the cylinder containing the desired sector. And the rotational latency is the additional time for the platter to rotate the desired sector to the head. The device bandwidth is the total number of bytes transferred divided by the total time between the first request for service and the completion of the last transfer. We can improve both this access time and bandwidth by managing the order in which storage input-output requests are serviced. Whenever a process needs an input-output to or from the drive, it issues a system call to the operating system. The request specifies several pieces of information, whether or not the operation is input or output. The open file handle indicating the file to operate on. What the memory address for the transfer is. And the amount of data to transfer. If the desired drive and controller are available, the request can be serviced immediately. If the drive or controller is busy, any new request for service will be placed in the queue of pending request for that drive. For a multi-programming system with many processes, the device queue may often have several pending requests. The existence of a queue of requests to a device that can have its performance optimized by avoiding head seeks allows device drivers a chance to improve performance via queue ordering. In the past, hard disk drive interfaces required that the host specify which track and which head to use, and much effort was spent on disk scheduling algorithms. The current goals of disk scheduling involve fairness, timeliness, and optimizations, such as bunch and reads and writes that appear in sequence, as drives perform best with sequential input and output. Therefore, some scheduling effort is still useful. Any one of several disk scheduling algorithms can be used, and we are about to discuss them. The simplest form of disk scheduling is, of course, the first come, first serve algorithm. This algorithm is considered fair, but it generally does not provide the fastest service. Consider this slide here. A disk queue with requests for input-output blocks on cylinder 98, 183, 37, 122, 14, 24, 65, and 67 in that order. Notice how that arm mechanism must be bouncing that head back and forth along that disk to retrieve these pieces of data. If the disk head is initially at cylinder 53, it will move first from 53 to 98, then to 183, then 37, then 122, then 14, 24, 124, 65, and finally to 67, for a total head movement of 640 cylinders, because it's been bouncing back and forth across cylinders. We can see the problem with first come first serve scheme by looking at this wild swing from 122 to 14 and then back to 124. If the request for cylinders 37 and 14 could be serviced together before or after 
the request for 122 and 124, the total head movement could have been decreased substantially and performance could be improved. In the SCAN scan algorithm, the disk arm starts at one end of the disk and moves toward the other end of the disk, servicing request until it gets to the other end. At the other end, the direction of the head movement is reversed and servicing continues. The head continuously scans back and forth across the disk. The scan algorithm is sometimes called the elevator algorithm since the disk arm behaves like an elevator in a building, first servicing all the requests going up and then servicing all the requests coming back, or in our case, servicing all the requests going from outside to in and then servicing all the requests from inside to out. Let's return our graphic to illustrate. Before applying SCAN to schedule the request on the cylinders 98, 183, 37, 122, 14, 124, and 65 and 67. We need to know the direction of the head movement in addition to the head's current position. Assuming that the disc arm is moving toward zero, which is the outermost track, and that the initial head position is again at 53, the head will next service 37 and 14. At the cylinder zero, the head will turn around and will move toward the other end of the disk, servicing the request at 65, 67, 98, 122, 124, and 183, as you see here. If a request arrives in the queue in front of the head, it will be serviced almost immediately. A request arriving just behind the head will have to wait until the arm moves to the end of the disk and reverses direction and comes back. Assuming a uniform distribution of requests for cylinders, consider the density of requests when the head reaches one end and reverses direction. At this point, there are relatively few requests immediately in front of the head, since these cylinders have recently been serviced. It's just been there. The heaviest density of requests is at the other end of the disk. These requests have also waited the longest, so why not go there first? That's the idea behind the next algorithm. C-scan or circular scan. C-scan or circular scan scheduling is a variant of scan designed to provide a more uniform wait time. Like scan, C-scan moves the head from one end of the disk to the other, servicing requests all along the way. When the head reaches the other end, however, it immediately returns to the beginning of the disk without servicing any requests on the return trip. Let's return to our example to illustrate. Before applying C-scan to schedule requests on cylinders 98, 183, 37, 122, 14, 124, 65, and 67, we need to know the direction of head movement in which the requests are scheduled. Assuming that the requests are scheduled when the disk arm is moving from 0 to 199 and that the initial position is again at 53, the request will be serviced as seen here. The C-scan algorithm essentially treats the cylinders as a circular list that wraps around from the final cylinder to the first one. Another technique, similar to scan, is look, which works the same way as scan, going back and forth along the platter, picking up requests as it goes. The difference is that with look, the system stops going in a direction if there are no requests in that direction. You remember scan sends the head from the outside to the inside and vice versa. As you can see in this slide, 
the technique saves a little head travel time. Of course, see look looks ahead like see scan, but doesn't continue to the end if there are no requests in that direction. Like see scan, it will turn around and come back. Shortest seek time first is another algorithm that retrieves the disk requests. As the name suggests, it goes to the request that is closest to the head, regardless of which direction the next request is in. There are some drawbacks to shortest seek time first. Uh, there are high chances of starvation if the seek time is higher than the incoming jobs. Switching the directions may slow the process a little bit. There are also chances of overhead. And this algorithm is not the most optimal one. How do operating system designers decide which to implement and employers choose the best to use? For any list of requests, we can define an optimal order of retrieval, but the computation needed to find the optimal schedule may not justify the savings over scan. With any scheduling algorithm, however, performance depends heavily on the number and types of requests. For example, suppose that the for example, suppose that the queue usually has just one outstanding request. Then all scheduling algorithms behave the same because they only have one choice of where to move the disk head. They all behave like first come, first serve scheduling. Scan and C-Scan perform better for some systems that place a heavy load on the disk because they are less likely to cause starvation problems. There will also be starvation, though, which drove Linux to create a deadline scheduler. This, this scheduler maintains separate read and write queues and gives reads priority because processes are more likely to block on read than on write. Well, I believe that we can conclude the lesson on mass storage systems. So let's stop here. Go ahead and look over your notes and update your study guide. And when you are ready, we will move on to the next unit on input-output.